This week on Maker Update, a payphone that calls the 90s, a moon for your nightstand, a way to finally get your fish talking, an NES with NFC, 3D printed ornaments, a sewing machine for makers, a stupid amount of maker contests, and the first ever maker fair in Los Angeles. It's Wednesday, November 30th. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another episode of Maker Update. It's great to be back, and I have a lot of cool stuff to show you, so let's jump right into it, starting with the project of the week. This past Saturday, Fuzzy Wobble posted an amazing project on Instructables that turns a full-size payphone into a programmable 90s jukebox. Most of the original internal components of the payphone are gutted in the process, replaced by an Arduino Mega, an Adafruit Music Shield, an audio amplifier board, speaker, and an ultrasonic rangefinder sensor. When you walk past the sensor, the phone rings, you pick up the handset, and are instructed to enter the number for the song you want to play. A miniature phone book of 90s artists are attached to the phone with numbers printed on the back. You punch in the number, and the music starts playing through the earpiece or through a louder internal speaker when you hit the star key. This is a super fun project that's great for a party. I was also happy to learn that you can pick up working payphones for under $200. The documentation on this project is outstanding and it opens a lot of doors for other project ideas. Personally, I kind of want a time travel telephone that would allow me to punch in different years and hear different audio artifacts from that year. I think that would be cool. Someone also suggested maybe doing a Rickroll phone that would detect when you're nearby and ring and then give you an earful of Rick Astley? That sounds awful, but you kind of want to do it, don't you? Another project that caught my eye this week is this 3D printed lunar phase clock by Galileo. Inside the enclosure, the project uses an Arduino Nano, an LED strip, an OLED display for the clock on the front, and a mini real-time clock chip to keep the time and lunar simulation in sync. It also includes a few party and demo modes just for fun. And in case you missed it, I posted my first ever Instructable a few weeks ago just before I left on vacation. It's my take on how to hack the Billy Bass singing fish toy to respond to audio. This fish has been taunting me for weeks and I finally got this hack going. It'll respond to audio, including Alexa, using an Arduino and a motor shield. I'm proud I was able to make something work. I actually surprised myself that it worked, <laughs> but I know it can be better. And if you guys could give me some feedback, that'd be super helpful, especially on the code. The code is just a wing and a prayer that that actually worked. Um, I'm also super curious to know what you guys came up with. I know a few of you have been working on your own solutions. Uh, let me know what happened with those. I, I, wanna, I wanna know, even if it led to a dead end, okay? You can find the link to the Instructable in the show notes for this video. Also, you can find all the show notes over on makerprojectlab.com. Another project that calls back to a previous episode is this mini Raspberry Pi Nintendo by Daft Mike. I proposed something similar in the last episode and shared a link to some 3D printed design files, but Mike's project takes it to a whole other level and he did this back in July. What blows my mind is that he went and created little mini 3D printed cartridges with NFC tags and labels so that specific games will launch once the game is placed in the machine. It's brilliant. And with the NES Classic prices going for over $200 now, it's a great excuse to dive in and make your own. A couple of tips I thought I'd share with you this week. The first is really just a reminder that if you have a 3D printer, you basically have a Christmas tree ornament factory. So now's the time to start cranking out a few for your friends and family. Thingiverse has a great collection that I'll link to. There's a huge selection of really beautiful ornaments, plus a bunch of geeky ones, and some great examples of how even just playing around with the same design but using different colors and filaments can create a cool effect. I also really enjoyed this review of the Brother SE400 by my friend and Make Magazine senior editor Caleb Kraft. This is a computer controlled sewing and embroidery machine. This particular model sells for around $315. They've been around for years, but until this review, I really haven't had someone demystify these for me. Caleb is honest about the limitations, but also has a maker's eye for the potential of using this for wearable electronics projects. Contests. The folks at Instructables have unleashed a huge wave of new contests ending in January. You've got Internet of Things, Brave the Elements, and Tables and Desks ending January 2nd, CNC on January 9th, First Time Authors on January 16th, 3D Printing, 
homemade gifts, indoor gardening, and Arduino ending January 23rd. Seriously, that's almost every corner of the Maker Universe in there somewhere, plus a catch-all for first-time authors. So you have no excuse not to try your hand at winning something. Maker Fairs, this weekend we have three Maker Fairs happening, including the first ever Maker Fair in Los Angeles, California, a first in Chengdu, China, and a second for Ogaki City in Japan. If anyone's going out to the LA Fair, or really any of those fairs, Send me a photo of you at the fair. I'm Donald at MakerProjectLab.com. I think it would be cool if during this segment we could share a few photos of people out of the fair to make it real and uh, just help motivate people to get out there and get inspired. All right, so that's it for this week's show. A big thanks to all the new subscribers who came here through the Billy Bass Project video. I'm glad to have you. I hope you'll stick around. And better yet, I hope if you like this video, you will share it with your friends. That's the best thing you can do for me, okay? And even if you only sorta of kinda like this video or this whole idea of the Maker Project Roundup, let me know how you think it could be better because I've gotten a lot of great feedback from people who've been watching and some of my favorite parts of this show are ideas that came through you guys, okay? So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.